Now we're going to take a high level overview of first half redundancy protocol. A first half redundancy protocol basically provide redundancy and load balancing of default gateway which is also known as first half. By connecting multiple physical router or it could be switch which is layer 3 and treat as one or more logical router in order to provide a first half redundancy. So this is the topic which we are going to discuss lot more about this. So first thing we need to know where we need to apply first half redundancy protocol. Actually why we require first half redundancy protocol and how it work. So consider if you have a network which always required internet connectivity or a connection to your remote office. And if you have a single uh, connectivity over your ISP, you may, you may have a single cable coming to your office or your home. If something went wrong with this router or the link which we can see right there, you may lose the connectivity of internet or the re remote location where you want to send the data. In order to make redundancy of your internet or remote connectivity, you're going to purchase another line. So if something went wrong with this line, I'm going to switch over this one. Likewise, if this, went, uh, this router went down, I'm going to use this one. But what about end devices? Uh, end devices, they cannot assign multiple gateway. Because if you connected with the same line as we can see in this diagram, we cannot have the same IP address out both physical interface. If we, we, if we assign same IP address out both interface, we will get an error message, duplicate address detected. So because of that, because of that, either we can assign this IP address in order to get internet connectivity or this one. So in your PC, you can assign only and only one default gateway. Now problem occur. If you have a 2 PC, 3 PC or 10 PC, that is not big deal. You're going through, uh, you're going through PC by PC and changing the default gateway out every PC. But in case of a larger network where may have thousands of devices connected inside LAN, you cannot change the default gateway if something went wrong with one link. Suppose uh, this multi-layer switch went down you're not going to change every device gateway because this is this is not good in practical. You have a thousands of devices. You, either you can change the default gateway of DSCP. Again, it required to uh, again it required update uh, to devices get the correct DSCP. Uh, sorry, to get the correct information of gateway via DSCP. So they may require to reboot. So that is not feasible actually. Uh, basically, uh, what we're going to do, or actually I should say, what first half redundancy going to perform, it create a virtual router. It is uh, very good to understand. Actually, it is not a router. It creates the virtual IP address in virtual MAC address. So since we are connected with the LAN, this virtual instance could be run on device 1 and device 2. So both devices simultaneously going to run or maybe more than two devices can run simultaneously this virtual root or sorry excuse me virtual router or a virtual gateway. But one of or uh, more than one can uh, actively sending data over internet. So if we're talking about the host which is connected inside LAN, this is transparent to them. They don't need to bother what is, uh, what is the IP address of this device, either this device or some other which is connected to the WAN. They're supposed to have the single IP address as a gateway and they need to perform redundancy. Something went wrong with this router, this router going to forward actively traffic to the internet or your remote location. 
So this is what the basic idea to work of your first half redundancy protocol. First half redundancy protocol which we are going to discuss, we have a three protocol which is HSRP, VRRP and GLBP. If we are talking about, uh, if we are talking more about first half redundancy protocol, we have more than, uh, more than protocol which is mentioned right there. So this is the link you can follow to get information more about first half redundancy protocol. So we have a HSRP, VRRP, CARP, ESRP, so on and so forth. But as per the recommended by CCNP 2.0 switch, we are going to discuss about these three protocol HSRP, VRRP and GLBP. But technically, if we are talking more about first half redundancy protocol, they create group of physical gateway, it could be layer 3 switch or a router. So we know very well both they can perform uh, routing function, layer 3 switch as well as router. And they all are agreed to assign single virtual IP address on all devices. So may, you may have a two device or three device or a multiple device which is connected to the internet or a WAN. They are going to work as a single gateway for your LAN. They are transparent for your LAN, your LAN treating as a single device in order to get their internet connectivity. Uh, so we assign a virtual IP address, uh, excuse me, all devices agree to assign virtual IP address on all devices as well as a virtual IP address which is going to use at a default gateway for all LAN devices. It could be laptop, desktop, printer or something else. Apart from the IP address, we also require a MAC address. Because if you are talking about how your data frame, in, uh, how your data send inside your network, you are supposed to have three information which is source and destination IP address, source and destination MAC address as well as source or destination port address. So these three information we required in order to generate or establish a communication from two devices. So because of that we also required a virtual MAC address as like a virtual IP address. So LAN devices using those virtual IP address and virtual MAC address as a default gateway your multi-layer switches, there is two ways to achieve the same task. So if we have a router, for example, suppose this is a router, we have a interface F0 slash 1, F0 slash 0, or F0 slash 0, F0 slash 1. We have a two interface, one interface goes to the internet and another interface which is goes to the LAN. But in case of multi-layer switches, we have uh, 24, 48 or more than 48 ports. So we, we can assign, we can configure first half redundancy protocol using two ways. Either you can create this interface as a layer 3 interface, executing command no switch port out all the device. And then after you can assign IP address out this interface, Likewise, same thing you can perform on LAN side. So this interface going to be work as a layer 3. If we have a layer 3 switch or a multi-layer switch, uh, multi layer switch. Or another hand, we can also perform create by, by creating a VLAN which is connected to the WAN or using switch virtual interface, assigning particular port to that specific VLAN in order to connect with internet and since we have rest of port going to the devices we can another we can uh, create another switch virtual interface as a gateway so you can utilize rest of port so in in this way we are going to create this interface as a layer 3 now we are supposed to connect with the switch and then after we can connect rest of LAN devices so you have a two way to achieve the same task. First is what? You can make this interface 
as a layer 3 and assign IP address out both interface or all devices and then perform first half redundancy protocol. Either you can create a VLAN for your LAN side as well as a VLAN for your WAN side out every uh, layer 3 or multi layer switches and then assign IP address as you uh, get from your ISP. Likewise, if you're talking more about your first half redundancy protocol, we have some other additional feature we, which we can implement in order to get uh, faster convergence. So suppose if we, we have a two, excuse me, if we have a two or more than two one connectivity or redundancy link, one of link going to work and rest of link may not working at same time. It is actually it is depend depends on redundancy protocol which we are going to discuss shortly. We can also enable IPSLA in authentication. So IPSLA basically going to check where we do have an internet connectivity from our router or layer 3 switch to the ISP. If yes, there is an internet connectivity, I am going to send data or actively I am going to forward data. If I lost connectivity, so maybe, in, maybe sometime you can see layer 1 and layer 2 is up and working. But at application layer, we may not have a connectivity. Or maybe we, uh, we lost layer 2 connectivity and layer 1 is up and working. So because of that, we can enable IPSLA in order to track the correct information of your network. So suppose if you have a switch right there or you have a modem or CSU, DSU connected with uh, internet, you can enable tracking. You can send ping packet to the particular uh, server. You can send ping packet. You can send uh, uh, FTP, HTTP or some other traffic. If you are not getting respond back or reply back from the device, now you are going to consider the link is no more available. So I should, I should make others router or other device up in order to forward data to the internet. This is what we can enable feature inside your first half redundancy protocol. Uh, likewise, if you're talking, if we come, if we compare these protocols, which is HSRP, VRRP, and GLBP, so HSRP is HSRP and uh, GLBP both are Cisco proprietary. They can create 0 to 255, 0 to 409, five groups. So basically, a group uh, group means you can perform uh, load balancing. So let me go through the example that makes sense. This is router A or router B or consider right now this is multi-layer switch, multi-layer switch 1, multi-layer switch 2. And we have one link goes to the LAN and we connected two devices. For example, we can create one group for this PC and another group for this PC. So if we are looking for uh, load balancing or uh, sharing traffic, then we, we required creating multiple group out same interface. So you can assign multiple group it participating uh, as a multiple group. So for group A, I am working as a actively for, for group B. I am working as an active router in order to send data to the internet. So if something went wrong with these devices for both group, I am actively working. So we will discuss shortly or uh, in upcoming section I should say when we are going to configure this thing. They also use some virtual MAC address. So these, these are the range which going to utilize. We have a HSRP version 1, HSRP version 2 and VRRP which is the open one. 
they also send some hello messages keep which is work as a keep live message so these are the address going to be used and they along with their port address so hello timer which is 331 and 3 and default default hold down timer or expire timer is something like this likewise if we discuss more about this thing so you can go through the entire documents some of protocol may perform may perform redundancy or actual redundancy which we don't need to configure but some of protocol we need to assign multiple group in order to get actually load sharing or redundancy so the glbp is provide more feature in order to get first half redundancy so it perform a load balancing which we don't need to require multiple group and it also perform it, it also support uh, ipv6 and uh, authentication and most of, i should say most of first half redundancy protocol they support authentication and some of them may support only clear text some of them support both md5 and clear text so this is what the high level overview of how does your first half redundancy protocol work why we required first half redundancy protocol in upcoming section, we're going to apply first half redundancy protocol using same topology. So we have a two switch or a multi-layer switch, I, I should say, and we have a two devices which are going to connect with the network. One more thing which, which I'm like to discuss in this video, I do not have any layer three switch because of that I'm going to emulate a layer three switch inside, inside GNS3. So might be you know very well about GNS3. So I'm going to put a special module of a switch inside a router, which make, make your device to work as a multi-layer switch. So this is all about in this section. In upcoming section, we're going to apply the rest of things.